international thing uh, yeah. in terms of distribution. So you still look at the so if you if you're looking at Amazon as some sort of a yardstick for statistics, no, you have to ask all. what what is Amazon to, to begin with? Well, who buys no, it? So. I mean, at, at the very beginning, when I was uh, when I started mentioning these, and obviously on my article as well, which I'll uh, link in the show notes, I made it very clear. Firstly, there's no suggestion that Amazon is representative, really representative of the market as a whole. But secondly, we're not even sure whether these sales figures are just representative of the Amazon for the UK or whether worldwide Amazon. Um, and I'm quite sure Game, when they release their figures for the for the festive period, will have completely different uh, results so um it's it's very much just a, a speculation a little bit of fun after christmas to see what sold uh, sold well on the figures that we have um and finally then the, the best selling technology for um for amazon.co.uk i assume over the christmas period although that's not specified which period that is is the kindle um and that beats uh, all other rivals to the number one spot. So I don't know whether we want to have a quick comment on the Kindle. Um, there's been some issues with with that over the over the year. I think um, the, the licensing agreement with Microsoft would be one of them that we could possibly bring up very quickly. Uh, Gordon, sorry. Right. Um, I, I've got. I, I'm torn with the Kindle. I really am. It looks the the, the new Kindle three. I think it is. Um, the, the cheap one, it's 109 bucks. That looks really tempting. If it played, e- if it played, if it opened EPUB, um, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I I've got a Sony e-reader, and I love that. that, that I've I would not be without an e-reader now. Uh, but the point is, and it's working fine. I might add, it's working great. But the point is, when that does eventually go dud, um, I'm I'm going to be scrambling around to try and find the pennies. To go and buy another e-reader, um, and that might be a Kindle at the time. I don't know. Might be a Nook. Could be anything. Uh, I'm torn. I really am because the Kindle does look really nice, but there's a few kind of worrying things. Um, I don't like the idea that um, it's using their own formats, their own binary formats. Although Calibra can convert into that, um, I don't like the idea that they can effectively reach in and delete stuff from your Kindle, like you did with the 1984. Uh, which is a really ironic title to do it with, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't pick a better title to display that. Um, Big Brother is most certainly deleting your files. Um, and then there was another one where they actually, they, they didn't delete it from your your Kindle, but they deleted it from your online repository of stuff that you'd bought, um, so that if you deleted it yourself off your Kindle, you couldn't go and re-download it, even though you'd bought it. So it's kind of a sneakier way to do it. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm not impressed with Amazon's sort of control and the DRM, the sort of closed nature. But other than that, the Kindle, as I say, I'm torn. The Kindle does look really nice. Um, but a quick quick word on Amazon um, is the other story that came out um, was just last month um, was remember well, remember that Amazon kicked WikiLeaks out. Um, and then a little while later, it turns out that Amazon were proudly announcing that the, the various, I think it was the FBI or the Department of Homeland Security or something, it was one of the major, I think it might have been the FBI, were one of their best customers. So go figure. Yeah. <laughs> so they might not, might, might not even have needed a phone call from someone in the FBI or someone like Lieberman or whatever to say, oh, by the way, you really want to host these WikiLeaks guys? Uh, might not even have needed that. They might have looked at that and said, "Hang on a minute, we've got we've got a lot of money coming in each each month or contract year or whatever from the feds." Um, yeah, we'll just we'll just do that without even informing them, you know. I think there was a Danish uh, political party which was hosted by uh, the Amazon Cloud, and they made available one of the mirrors for for WikiLeaks afterwards, which was interesting for people who are very. Uh, patiently watching to see if Amazon is kicking out the mirror of WikiLeaks, which which was in fact on the on back on the cloud, just in a different place. And also there was a uh, an attempt to sell WikiLeaks as an ebook on Amazon, and this received very bad reviews because people weren't happy about Amazon making money out of the very same thing it kicked out. Uh, and also you probably have heard about the Apple situation with, with WikiLeaks. So Apple is also on the uh, on the you know S list now, uh, as far as uh, companies that kind of try to censor WikiLeaks for no proper reason. And with Apple, they have not actually supplied any reason, or they basically would tell you that some law or some rules were 
violated, but they won't, won't specify any of them, and none of them were actually broken based on the terms of conditions. So it's always very vague. They always refer to like some imaginary, you know, denial of service attack or the risk that there might be sometime in the future a denial of service attack is an excuse to try and remove content which they disagree with. Yeah. And in, in, in fairness, though, Apple's track record is they are they are more secretive than North Korea um, in the way that they release information to the public. Um, they don't tell anything. They deny, deny, deny. I mean, they're like politicians. Um, they absolutely refuse to comment on anything. I mean, it's such a, a tight knit um, operation that they only let out very, very controlled versions of things. So that's nothing new from Apple. You wouldn't expect Apple to do anything other than that. They even Company... shut down a website which was called Apple Rumors or Apple. It wasn't called Apple. It was was one of the sites which was leaking lots of stuff before it came. Oh and yeah, then... I mean they, they are they are insane when it comes to, to closing down any rumors or any off message stuff. So it's, it's it's when you see companies that are used to when they regularly blog about things and regularly announce things, it's when they don't say anything you start to wonder. But when Apple do it, that's just part of the course, really. Well, just, uh, just before we close this section up, uh, Roy, I don't know if um, you would like to uh, have a quick mention about the, the, cross, the cross-licensing the deal between Microsoft and the Kindle. No, I think it's a very bad thing calling it licensing, as you did. That's exactly playing into the hands of... Uh, you make it sound like it's a very neutral thing, and you make it sound like it's supposed to be you know, licensed, like it's a copyright thing. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying we shouldn't call this licensing. That's just part of the extortion deal is that they have to pretend to be nice. And every time they sign these, these sorts of deals, uh, which HTC as well, it turns out, by the way, HTC was apparently sued by Nathan Mirvold. Apparently, the, all the trolls of Microsoft are now suing everything. Troll Alan is doing that, and, and Nathan, who's a friend of Bill Gates, is doing that. Bill Gates has got his own trolling firm now, uh, which lots of people don't know about. And they all try to sue at the same time to put taxes from all possible directions. The French government, which happens to be very close to Microsoft, and people probably know about Sarkozy and the relationship he has with Gates and with Microsoft, they start to now look for a copyright tax on Linux uh, in some sense. I'm not sure how the, legislate, the legislation was being done, but basically they tried to tax everything except Windows, uh, so-called PCs, uh, based on the the new law, which is similar to what Canada is proposing, now the, the so-called iPod tax, or uh, trying to have people pay for their uh, basically multimedia playing capable type of devices, you know, they try to find all kinds of ways to to put extra extra costs on all of these things. In this case, also the Android-based. Uh, uh, what's it called? The French one that makes all the media players. Arcos, I think. Arcos. Yeah, that yeah. that was. I, I I read something about. It. I don't remember what country it was, but the, the they'd said there was an extra tax on ta- tablets, like the iPad um, or like the Android um, Galaxy Tab or whatever. Um, and the reason that that Microsoft was excluded. As if you put Windows on it, it then effectively, by law or by import duties and whatever, becomes a computer. Becomes... Usually, usually a computer is how you get these songs in the first place. That's the funny yeah. thing. Is that uh, you, uh, usually, you know, you're an Android, you can barely connect to the internet. You won't be using a Tron client to, to get any of these songs, so you think it should be the opposite, if anything. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's it. So they wanted to, to put that extra tax on anything that wasn't Windows. They don't consider anything other than Windows on a tablet to be an operating system. So that, that goes for the iOS as well as Android or Mego or whatever. It's if, uh, that, is, that is blatantly outrageous. It really is because, I mean, it doesn't matter. My, my little MP3 player, it has an operating system. Okay, it's very, very basic and it's very customized to that device. But it's, it's embedded, but it's still an operating system, you know? But uh, yeah, I mean, going back to the Amazon thing, and that's how we got to, to, the, to uh, with all these deals, in the case of HTC, just before they signed this deal, and also got sued by all kinds of other companies, including Apple. I should mention Apple is very, very close to Microsoft when it comes to their strategies. Uh, they both are very scared of the commodity platform, of things like Linux and other 
I think Linux is now in all the embedded platforms, in every operating system like WebOS or, or Android or Migo, they, they all build upon Linux at some stage. Uh, but the thing with it, with HTC, they will always try to pretend they just signed this deal because there is